Today I'm going to show you how to set up your eEdge website. First thing you're going to do is log into your kw.com account. Once you've done that, you're going to click on the My Leads on your dashboard. That's actually going to take you into your contacts dashboard. Once you're here, you're going to hover over the admin up at the top in the white bar, and you're going to go to the My Account. Once you are here, you're going to recognize that your information, you were missing your cell phone number, so we're going to scroll down until we see the red edit button. We're going to click on the edit button, and up at the top, we're going to go ahead and put in your cell phone number. When you enter it, you want to enter it in the way that you want it to appear on your website. When you're done with that, you're going to come down to the bottom and you're going to hit the Save button. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to click over on the General Info section on the left-hand side. And we're going to go through and we're going to make sure that everything on here is correct. Again, this is what's going to show on your website. So here we're going to make sure that it has the full brokerage name. So for Waterford, it's going to be Keller Williams Advantage 2 Realty. For Lake Nona, it's going to be Keller Williams Advantage 3 Realty. And for Oviedo, it's going to be Keller Williams Advantage Realty. The address, we recommend that you put the address to the office. That way you don't have sellers or buyers showing up at your house. You're going to put in the city, state, zip code. And the office phone number. We recommend that you put in the actual office phone number. That way, in case um, someone can't reach you, then they can always call the office. And also the office fax number. As you scroll down, you're going to change your time zone to be Eastern Time. And then you're going to hit the Save button. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit the Website tab up at the top. And from there, we're going to go down to the main text section, and here we're going to actually have this View Your Home Page button. My suggestion is to go ahead and hit the View Your Home Page, which will open it up in a new tab up at the top. What this allows you to do, it allows you to see your eEdge website as it is right now. My first recommendation is to save this as a favorite and name it your eEdge website. That way you don't have to remember the website address, but you can always get to it when you need to. You'll see that we're missing a, a logo, your image, and a few other information. So we're going to go back to your eEdge tab. And next we're going to go down to the site images along the left-hand side. Here you're going to be allowed to change your site banner and your agency logo. The logo, of course, is going to be the Keller Williams logo. If you hit the Add button, it'll show you all the logos that are available for you to choose. So you're just going to go through and you're going to choose the one that you like the best. Once you've done that, you're just going to click on it, and when it shows up on the top here, you're going to hit the red Save button. Once you've done that, my recommendation is to go over to your eEd site and hit the refresh button so that now you'll be able to see the changes. The banner image is this image here, which is in the square. You can change that to be whatever you want it to be. So again, we're going to hit the red add button. Now here, you can actually enter in a keyword, um, a single word. It could be home, it could be Orlando, it could be Florida, it could be beach, it could be whatever you want it to be and you'll just type it in and hit the red search button. What that's going to do is it's actually going to bring up a slew of stock images that you can use, and you just scroll through the images to find the one that you like the best. My recommendation for this is to scroll as far down as you can, because typically the very top ones are going to be the ones people see first, and so that's what they're going to choose. Um, as you scroll down, you'll see a lot of nice photos. You'll just pick one that you like and hit the Save button. Once you see the photo here, again, you can go back to your website and refresh, and now you'll see that the image has changed. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to come down to the community search. And what this is, is you are going to be able to add community sites to your website so that people can click on a specific community and properties within that community will show up. 
So you're going to hit the Add Community. You're going to name the community. Um, typically, you're going to use a city, a neighborhood, an area, um, anything like that. And then you're going to start adding your zip codes. The nice thing is, is that zip codes can be added to multiple communities. And you'll add as many zip codes as you want. As you come down, you have a descriptive content. If you have information on the community, here's where you would put it. If you don't have any specific information on the community, that's fine. You can leave this blank, and you can always come back later and edit it. As you scroll down, you can put a center of the community, which is a map. So you'll hit the gray Add Center button. It's automatically going to put the pin at the location of your office. What you can do is this is a normal map. You can scroll out. You can move the map around. You can click on the pin and move it around to wherever you want it to be. And once you've got it in the place that you want it, then we're going to go ahead and hit the Save button at the bottom. Now, what happens is when you are on your eEdge site, when you hit the Refresh button, you'll now see your community is served, and there's your community. When a client clicks on that community, it will give you the new listings, the single-family home listings. If there's any condos or townhomes within the area, it will also give you those. And it's just a nice listing of the available properties. You'll see that it gives a few properties that they can click on. As they come down, you'll see the map with the pin, which is exactly where you placed it. And then on the top, they can actually search for homes within that community. Now, what's going to happen is when they are searching for homes, they will only come up with homes that are in the zip codes that you specified. So that's why you want to make sure that if it's an area, like the UCF area or the Lake Nona area, or Medical City, or you know the Oviedo area, things like that, that you include all of the zip codes that you are willing to travel to in order to sell or help a buyer find their home. You can always click on the logo at the top left of your website, and that will take you back out to your home page. So we're going to go back to eEdge, and the next thing that we're going to change is going to be the second to last thing, the listing search fields. What this does is when someone goes to your website and they click on the Buy tab, they have an option of what they are allowed to choose from. So initially, they're only allowed to choose a property type and a listing type. What we're going to do is we are going to expand that search into multiple features. So all of the features, go ahead and click on them all because you want them to be able to choose what type of property they want. On the bottom, the optional search fields, my recommendation is only put in the subdivision, the open house, the schools, and the senior housing. The reason for that is because year built and days on website, that actually limits the search criteria. And we don't want to limit them. We want to give them as many possibilities as they can. So we're going to hit the Save button when we're all done. And now when you go back to your website, you'll be able to refresh, and now you can see they have property features, and if there's any open houses, things like that, that they can choose from. What this does is it gives your consumer a larger availability to search for. So once you have that, the only other thing that we need to do is to add your photo. So you're going to come here to the My Account tab up at the top, and you're going to scroll all the way to the bottom. And you'll be able to see there's a website image, a marketing image, and a marketing logo. My suggestion is to add an image for each one of these things because they actually go different places. The image for your website image will only go on your website. The image for marketing will only show up on your flyers, your campaigns, your postcards, things of that nature. And your marketing logo, that's going to be an extra photo that you can have. It's free. You don't have to pay for it. And it's just extra. So it could be of a house. It could be of your dog. It could be of your family. It could be of a neighborhood. It could be of a sign of a prominent neighborhood in a specific area that you are working in. Whatever the case may be, you'll just hit the edit button below the no image available. And this will allow you to browse your computer for an image. You're going to choose an image that you like. 
and then you're going to hit the red upload button. Once you receive this notification at the top that says your image is updated successfully, go ahead and scroll back down to the bottom and now you'll see your image there. Once you have your images in the marketing image and the website image, then you're done. Your website is completely set up and it's ready to be used.